Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're gonna have a quick breakdown on Rain. See all of his buttons, all of his special moves, what's good, what's not good, and we're also gonna go over all of his custom moves, and so you can decide on what you think your your ideal variation would be. So, what I have right here is just base Rain. And even base Rain, all of his stuff is like pretty awesome. He's almost a complete character, even without equipping any abilities. So, on his own, he has his Round the World kick, his... Evaporate, I think that's called, and his Guitar Toss, I think that's all. Um, oh, and his Argus Plunge. So, he has this, like, Water Bubble move. So that's a lot of things on its own. He has, like, he has combos with this, he has a projectile with this, he has, like, anti-footsies with his, like, Argus Plunge to, you know, just get in on the opponent, kind of like Liu Kang's Flying Kick, because it is actually surprisingly fast. It looks a bit slow, but it it's a deceptively quick. And he also has like an interesting unique move, like with this, it's kind of like um, Ethereal Molina's evap uh, evaporate, <laughs> like her fadeaways. So this is, you know, a lot of interesting moves, even just in base range. So let's quickly get into all his buttons and which ones you will want to be using a lot. So obviously he has a standing string. He can go into 1-3-3, three, three, which just ends in a kick. Um, and you can't usually easily combo off of that unless you have the um, air geyser, which we'll get into soon. But, you know, you can get a projectile off of it or something, and it's just good, like, in combos. It's good at adding damage to your combos, and yeah, it's useful that way. Uh, he can also go 1-3-4 instead of 1-3-3 three, three to end in an overhead, which is safe. This, this string on its own, by the way, is also safe. And, but the overhead, you know, it's a bit of a mix-up, but it's also safe, so that's pretty good. So he's, all of his options off of his string are very safe. And he has, like, an overhead mix-up, which is really good. And this is actually a really good mix-up, because it kind of comes out kind of slowly. So you can go, like, 1-3 into a down-3, and it comes out, like, almost, like, at a similar time as the overhead would be. People get hit by that, like, every time. And then once you've hit a down-3, you know, you can go into throw or grab or, um, or mid-pressure, and, you know... Strike through is very strong in this game, as you all know. <laughs> but yeah, so this his standing strings are really good, and they're very useful. So I like that overhead in there, and it's actually good for mix-ups, as we'll get into later. Um, his standing two, he has this string, um, two four two grab. It does good damage, and it'll be kind of what you use most of the time when you're ending a long combo. So something like this. Just because it comes out very quickly and it doesn't need a special move, because, you know, special moves can be a bit slow and drop out of Rain's combos. So it's a good way and pretty damaging way of ending a lot of his combos. And it's also really good because it leaves the opponent right at your feet with, a, you know, decent enough hit advantage, you know. You can go for throws, you can go for maybe, you know, a low or a short hop even. You know, just mix the opponent up, do whatever while they're right in your face. So that's really good. And, like, you know, if you won't think they'll wake up, you know, you can do your evaporate to kind of, like, go through the wake up and then punish them for it. Like, boop. Punish them. So, yeah. This string is really good. And you can even cancel off of the third hit. And that's one of his most um, damaging strings. It doesn't launch the opponent. So, like, his most damaging is this one, but that puts him in the air. So he can't really combo for that. But this one he can. Um, it also has 2-4 uh, down 4, which um, just ends in a safe low, because this version is actually unsafe, and you can't actually special cancel that on block. You can't go into anything, so yeah. But if you want to keep it safe, you can just do this. Okay, um, his standing 4, I mean his stand 3, is pretty useless. You're not going to really be using it for much, other than like maybe in like extended combos, you'll like use it, because you know, it doesn't like as much as some other things would, but um, it's not going to have too much of a use. Like even there, that simple combo did a bit more because I started with the stand 3, but yeah. So if you do get a hit confirm and you use a stand 3, that's pretty good. It is decently fast, but you know, it's not plus on block or anything. It's actually negative 5, so it's, it's really not that good. It doesn't have great range, so not too much use for this other than, you know, in some combos to get some max damage. The stand 4, um, kind of, is just like a basic stand 4. It's 11 frames, so it's actually pretty fast for a lot of stand 4s. It's not plus on block, it's minus one, but it does leave you at a good range, you know, you can maybe do one of your pokes that don't have hitboxes, you know, so they can't actually hit you, like, with that water, so you can throw this out, like, really easily, so, you know, it leaves you in the perfect range for this kind of stuff. But, you know, it's not going to be that useful, sometimes you use it in combos, if you want, you know, to get some nice damage. Pretty easily. Pretty easily. 
screwed. <laughs> um, what? There we go. But uh, yeah, so you can use it for damage, but you know, it's not going to be that useful. Just like a Stand 3, it'll just be in combos. Okay, so his all his pokes are pretty decent. He's got a 7 frame down one. It has decent range. It's not excellent, but you know, it's also not bad. It's a little bit below average. His down 3 though is really good, so it, it has a pretty big hitbox. It has decent um, hit advantage, plus 14, which is pretty good. You know, you can easily jail into his stand 1 and stuff. Even his stand 2. Yeah. Um... But it, you know, it reaches decently far, and you also can't hit him, like, because it doesn't actually have a hitbox, that water, so he can just throw it out, and like, he's it's almost like a short projectile. It's down four. It's like, it's pretty good. It's actually punishable. I don't use it that much, just because it's down three is so good. Like, it has almost everything you want from the down four, but it's in a down three. So yeah, I just tend to use that, and it also looks cooler, so... <laughs> um... All, all of his jumping attacks are pretty good. Actually, I take that back. His jump 3 is really good, I really like it, except his other two jumping attacks are kind of awful. Um, they just have really bad range and really bad hitboxes, like this is his jump 1, and you kind of need to be like right on top of the opponent in order to hit with it. Like it has a very short hitbox, doesn't have any like good downwards hitbox, it doesn't go outwards much, he just kind of like, like even there. You have to be right in their face in order to hit it, you can't just like do it like that with a lot of jump ins, like do it there it'll just miss. And same with his stand 2, it's a little bit- um, his jump 2. It's a little bit better, but he really doesn't reach forward much, so you can't really get a jump in from around this distance like you could with most characters, unless you do it like super late, like yeah, and like, which is giving the opponent more time to anti-air, so that's not very good. But his jump 3 is really cool. It's like, kind of an Injustice style jump 3, like the animation reminds me of some of those characters, like Blue Beetle or something. Um, and it is has really easy cro crossovers, like, you have a lot of time to get the, like, the crossover jump in. To get stuff like that, where, you know, the opponent falls towards you. And you can get combos that way. Uh, but yeah, it's just really good and it's super easy to combo off of. Like, you can go into his stand 1 just, like, automatically. He can, like, because his dashes are also really good. That's something I haven't mentioned yet. His dashes are awesome. I can't wave dash very well. But you can see that his movement is really good. And so that makes it really easy for him to combo off of his jumping attacks, because, you know, he can dash in really quickly. To go in for, like, basically any button you want. Uh, yeah. So, we talked about his pokes. Uh, quickly, his grabs. I mean, they're nothing special. They leave the opponent kind of far away. Like, so he doesn't have any throw loops. That one actually leaves him almost full screen. Um, but they do have crushing blows on both sides, which is pretty cool. And they're both just basic crushing blows. They just do damage. Um, okay. I think we talked about all of his base things. So now his back one is this quick mid, 12 frames, and it has okay range. It's not that great. But what's good about this is it's safe. It can be really easily staggered. I don't know, it comes out so fast. People stagger this all the time. It's really good. Like that block or that grab. Especially since the thing after it, this kick... Wait. Is safe. This kick that he does afterwards, he can come out both sides, he can side switch all he wants, he can even hold it down to delay it. To kind of mess the opponent up. But he can switch sides or do any of this kick and it's completely safe, which makes this stagger so strong. So you can just go back one, back one, back one, back one, back one, and then this, because they're, you know, ready for you to do this part, to like switch sides. And uh, now that we're talking about this, this move in itself is so awesome, because like you can hold it down to mess you up with the opponent's timing, but you can, the best part is that you can just switch sides, even on block, just willy-nilly, completely safe. So if you're like stuck in the corner, doop doo doo and like, oh, the opponent's pressuring you in the corner, and you get like one chance to put a mid out, you're out of the corner, and now they're in the corner. <laughs> like, it's such a strong move. Uh, I think it has the flawless block gap, but come on, be real. If we're playing online, and you're not playing with pros, I don't think anyone's gonna be flawless blocking this, or at least not, you know, consistently. So it's, it's a safe move to throw out and switch sides. It's really awesome. Okay, um, so that was his back one, standing one. So he's 4-2 is this really interesting move, where he goes 4-2 grab, and that you can actually either leave the opponent re-stood, 
or you can press 4 again and he'll like throw them around the other side and do a bit extra damage. And uh, yeah, this is, that's pretty good. And he can also do 4-2 down, down 4, just to keep them on the same side. And uh, this version is actually safe, while this one is very not safe. Minus 15. <laughs> I believe the first attack is also safe. Yeah, minus six. So we can. This is another just great mid. He has a lot of good tools that are just like completely safe. Almost everything he does is safe except for like this, <laughs> and obviously you know his special moves. But um, yeah, he's very safe. And he can keep himself like more safe by doing like this for extra staggers. But um, the grab part of it is actually very good because if it's uh, if it hits on counter hit or punish, it actually leads to a crushing blow. And after this crushing blow, you can actually do both extensions. So you can either just leave it like that as a restand, so maybe... Oh, so, <laughs> it's not like you're gonna land it in a combo, so it, this has to be on punish. But, um, maybe if you don't want to switch sides, you know, you can just do this and leave them there. Or if you want to switch sides and maybe put them in the corner, you can uh, switch around or get that extra damage and do it like that. And, you know, good damaging mid, and that's really good for whiff punishing, you know, you're out in this distance. It reaches, like, if not, like, slightly further than Cetrion's board too, so it's really good. Really good spacing tool, and, you know, knowing that it can punish, um, get a crushing blow for punishing or a countering makes it an even better spacing tool, because if you get that spacing correctly, and they press something and you punish them for it, big damage. And, uh, yeah, it's, a lot of his moves, by the way, are very plus on, um, on hits, so like, that's plus 10, you know, you can easily go in for strike throws, this on itself is plus 13, like, that, oh, not that one. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so many of his moves are very plus, and, I mean, it's very helpful when you're just, like, going in and going in for grabs and stuff. Okay, his back two is probably his best mid that you're gonna be using. It's short-ranged, but it's ten frames, so it's one of the, like, faster, like, faster than average mids. Usually, like, eleven or twelve is the average, but he has a ten, so that's really good. And he has a string he can do off of it, back two, one, two. And the back two one, you're gonna be using it a lot of combos if you want to keep them like pretty simple, because it, you know, bounces the opponent up pretty high because it's a double hitter. So you can get your like double extension combos pretty easy if you want to do something simple like this. Simple. <laughs> like something really basic like that. But um, yeah. And it also doesn't scale as much as some of his other strings, so like something like this, you can see the last hit did 77 damage. But um, after this, it does 81, so it's good for in combos because it doesn't scale as much. And it's also safe, which is pretty strong for, you know, a good mid, a hit confirmable, like, three hit string mid, where like basically all of the hits are safe, is really strong. And uh, okay, back three is this like low kick that you can extend in back 3-4. Back 3-4 makes it safe. It's basically just a low, you know, he can combo from it if he commits, but you know, I, or at least I can't hit confirm that, but I don't think anyone's gonna be able to hit confirm that, so you just have to commit and go in for combos if you wanna try and get a combo that way. Um, but yeah, it's good, always good to have a low, and you can keep it safe. And, because his short hop attacks, actually I don't think I mentioned those, they're also really good. Um, this one's 9 frames, but it's kind of not as good as his, um, short hop attack, um, kick. Short hop kick? Whatever you call them. It actually reaches so far, so like, even from this, like, starting distance, where his, like, forward 2 reaches, his jump kick reaches. It doesn't even look like it reaches that far, but, like, he just, like, travels and spins and kicks, and it's really good. It goes, like, a lot further than, like, expected, so, you know, people think you're gonna jump in from there, and then they like try to get ready to anti-air you, like you can't really anti-air short hops re really that well. And this is, like you can do this short hop from the distance that you would do at jump attacks. It's just really good and really helps his mix-ups and stuff. So you know, like if you're doing, you know, lows or short hops, it's really good. Um, yeah, so it's 4-3. Back 3 is this. 4-3. Um, I haven't really found quite what the use is for this move. It's a very safe decently quick high, you know, I, get, I think it's just a move that you can just like throw out like willy-nilly, like it's not something you really have to think about, like you can just do it. It's negative one, so it's extremely safe. It's only 11 frames on startup, it is a high, but it goes into a mid quickly afterwards. You can't cancel it into like anything, uh, like even air attacks, 
It just happens. It's safe. You know, I guess you could use it in combos if you wanted. Actually, it has pretty decent hit um, advantage on hit, so it knocks him down for quite a long time, so you, know, you can go for jump-ins and stuff. But, you know, it's just something, you know, throw out for fun. It's just a safe high into mid. Interesting move. Uh, anyways, his forward four is this interesting, like, wave kick attack, where he just, like, launches out this wave. It kind of reminds me of Spawn's back four, his sweep. Except it's not a sweep, and it is very safe. Minus four, and it has, like, a bunch of push pushbacks, so, like, it's almost, like, zero. It's just, like, back to neutral once they block this. And that's just uh, kind of just, like, his forward three. It's just one of those moves that you're just gonna throw out. You don't really have to think about it. Because, like, this one, this, uh, his 4-3 will anti-air, this one kind of won't, you know, you can just throw these out, like, uh, you know, just throw them out without thinking about it, because, you know, they're just safe stuff, you know, make the opponent respect you, make them block stuff, and, yeah, I don't know, they're just good spacing tools you can just throw out, especially after, um, some of his things, you know, where he's plus on block, um, some of the setups we'll get into later. You know, it's just good to have, you know, a fast, long-range mid that you don't really have to commit to, because this one, you know, you're up in your opponent's face, you know, if you do something unsafe, you know, they might punish you or grab you or something. This one, there's just, like, nothing they can do about it, even if they block it, like, what are you going to do from that distance? Like, <laughs> so yeah, just a very safe, fast mid, and a sweep, there's nothing interesting. Um, okay, I think that's all of his strings we covered. We covered that he can change sides, he can hold down that thing. Um... Yep, yep, yep. Okay, yeah, so those are all of his strings. They're all pretty useful. The main ones you're going to be using are his back two, his forward two for spacing. Um, if you're in the corner or if you're trying to side switch, you're going to be using this back one to just, like, switch and just, you know, st as I said, staggering this is really good. And, you know, I'm not going to be jumping that much because his jump attacks aren't that good, except for his jump three. That one's really good. But, like, jump in these are not that great. But fortunately, his jump kick makes up for it. Whoops. <laughs> but yeah, forward two, back two, and like a bunch of his like forward fours, you know, uh, you're just gonna be throwing them out, you know, willy nilly. And you know, mix up stuff of his like attack string, because there's an overhead there. So yeah, very strong stuff, just even if it, in his base toolkit, and we haven't even gotten into his special moves. So, his base projectile is his guitar toss. It's an interesting projectile. It's kind of like his um, like his water ball in his old in the old games, where it's the same on block, like no matter where you are. So it'll be unsafe no matter where you throw it, because he does the whole like throw animation the whole time. Because he has to be ready for like, because if you hit it, you can actually amplify it, and so that's why it's the same when no matter where you hit it, it'll always be minus twelve. Um. But what's interesting about it is you can either amplify it on hit to get some extra damage and just knock them down for a pretty decently long knockdown, 30 frames about. And um, But if you amplify it while it's traveling, you can even like amplify it like right before it hits them. Oh, my meter. And it becomes a mid while it's traveling. And also, not only is that a mid and it does, you know, decent damage and it's a fast mid projectile, it's also completely safe, so this adds a ton of mix-up for Rain, like with his like strike throw game, because he can just cancel anything into a safe mid. That like, and if it hits them, it'll just you know knock them down. You get 90 damage. But if they, you know, it's just so much mix-up off of his like down one grab, down one, down one, down one, down one, down one grab, <laughs> or down one into this. Like you're gonna go down one, and do they get to poke back, or do you go into this? Like, it's, it's a lot of good mix-up, and it's good to have a safe special mids, special move mids. It's a really powerful tool for him to have. And also, you can use it to, like, end some combos where the gravity is too much to end in, like, your more damaging enders, like, um... Like your round-the-world kick. You can end in this, so, like, see, even just after this, you can't actually get anything off of it except for this. There's this misses. Okay, um... His round the world kick, may as well get to that now. It's like generally, depending on what variation you're using, is gonna be his most like damaging uh, ender, like just in general. So like usually like, you know, if you're just doing strings, you'll wanna end in this, but a lot of the time you can't. So it just turns into how, how you wanna do your combos and 
you know, he has a lot of freedom with his combos. And... So yeah, you can end combos with that. And obviously, it's his, his like, combo starter, and it's really awesome that it's in every variation, so you always have the chance to get combos, no matter, like, what moves you're, like, doing. So it's... That's really awesome. He always has flashy combos no matter which variation he's using. I really love that. You can do like any kind of flashy stuff you want. Maybe something like this. But uh, yeah, lots of stuff he can do um, with this. And it's actually a really like decently long range. Like you can do it almost. Some, you can almost. Hello, speak. You can almost use it like Liu Kang's flying kick or stuff like that. It's not as fast, obviously, but like it's just a really long-ranging, long-reaching mid. And you know, if you want to commit, you can just <laughs> amplify it for fun, you know. And if it does hit, you know, you get a combo. And you know, if it doesn't, I don't know, it just wasted your meter. Oh yeah, that's a real combo. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's nothing too much to say about it. It's his combo. It's his combo move. Okay, now for his weather ball. Or, wait, what do they called it? Argus Plunge. Um, this move is just another one of his combo enders. It's a bit more easy to connect, because, you know, it's a bit faster, and it has, a, like, moves a bit quicker and stuff. And you can also amplify it, and he'll just, oh, easy crushing blows. Spoilers. But, you know, you amplify it, just does a bit extra damage. And when he amplifies it, he can actually choose which way he comes up. So as you saw there, he came up on that side. And if I hold down um, left, he will appear on this side. So you can choose which side you appear on, which is really good. You know, you don't want to accidentally corner yourself. You can always choose whether the opponent's in the corner or whether you're in the corner. So that's really good. And not only is it a good combo ender, as we saw before, spoilers with the easy crushing blows, um, it is also has a crushing blow and it's for his armor break. So this is his armor break, it's a very good armor break, because, you know, it was going to be your ender for your combo anyway, so a lot of the time you can just, like, do your combos and whatever you would have done, so if the opponent, like, the AI, when you set them to break away, they break away, like, instantly. Um, uh, fast, I'll just do, like, delay, so not super late, but a lot of the time, like, when you're just doing your combos, you know, if you've done something like this, and then they go to break away, you were going to do this anyways, and a lot of the time it just ends up catching your opponent even though you didn't even mean to do it as an armor break, and as an armor break, it gets a crushing blow. So, you know, if you ever read that they're gonna break away, you can get easy crushing blows. And good guaranteed damage off of any of your, like, uppercut. And it also is guaranteed off of that, so you can get guaranteed damage if you want to think they're gonna break away you know just very good breakaway move in general because it's what you can be using on combos anyway so you don't have to do anything different okay and oh lastly we have his evaporate which is a very interesting move he just kind of does this and just disappears <laughs> so when he does this um i'll get kotal to as we saw in the trailer get him to do this you can just block as much as you want, it's not a certain number of hits, you can block as many hits as you like, as long as you hold it down. You know, it has a set amount of time, I'm holding it down for as long as possible. But, um, you can just go through anything, and then, you know, easily punish the poor people that try to attack you. We can do some better combo than that here. Wait, I'll actually do something... Okay, no, I won't. <laughs> Wait. He does have a bit of recovery, so you need, do need to be ready. But, um, you know, it's easy. It's cool. And you can also kind of use it in, um, pressure, like... Because, you know, you turn invisible. Uh, not invisible. Invincible. So, like, after you do something like this, you can almost use it, like, as a... Like a cancel. Because, like... You're invincible this whole time that you're standing there, so they can't do anything about it. So it's kind of like a mix-up, like, when are you going to come out of it? And then you can, like, press it down one quickly. And they need to react to you letting go of it, so, like, a lot of time, people, like, don't know how to <laughs> how to deal with this. And, you know, 
at least there's some inter interesting pressure and like stuff online because you know maybe like after you poke poke into this they go to poke you back but their poke goes through you so you go something like this and then their poke whiffs and then maybe you can punish it depending on what it is but yeah it's a very interesting move and i really like that it's in his base variation uh, his um base toolkit because you know it's just fun and awesome to have like interesting moves in a character's toolkit okay now that we're done i think with everything that he has um in his base toolkit we can start talking about his custom moves and how you're going to customize the character and make him the way you want to play him so the one move i have on in this variation is his um air attacks just because it didn't fit in the other ones <laughs> but um basically this just makes it so he can do a bunch of his moves in the air so whether it's his argus plunge Actually, I wonder if you can, um... Oh wait, he didn't break away. <laughs> but if the opponent, like, breaks away late... You can probably get that, like, off of a jump kick and get some really good damage that way. Oh, wait. I feel like that's possible. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, maybe not. Maybe off of, like, a stand 4 or something? Stand 3? But yeah, it just depends on how fast they break away, I guess. Come on, so close. You know, against a human, they're not going to be breaking away instantly, like, at perfect timing, like the AI, so that'll work sometimes. But yeah, basically, this just allows him to do his things in the air, so he can cancel into this in the sky if he wants. He can, um, it also works with his other moves that replace this, so like with the, the rift, like, skydive attacks. Um, it'll let you do those in the air as well, and it also lets him do evaporate in the air, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> Um, I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of this is. It has a little bit better recovery, I think. Oh no, it's about the same. But, you know, I guess, you know, if you've jumped in the air and the opponent goes to do something, you know, it just gives you an opportunity to do this in the air. Like, if you just want to not get anti air and just be invincible. Maybe if the opponent doesn't, uh, a down two. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna demonstrate this, but we'll see. So if I... I'm jumping. And... Wait, I'll make him do it a little bit later. It's probably not going to work, but, um... You know. See, look, that actually worked. So if you've, you're jumping in on the opponent and you think they're going to anti-air you, because, you know, you've been doing a lot of jump-ins, so they're getting ready to anti-air you. And when they are actually anti-airing you... Anyway. Yeah, so when they're actually hitting you, you can just go into this, and then punish their down twos, or depending on what it is, if it's punishable, you can probably get punished for it. So that's pretty cool. So uh, yeah, those are just a random uh, moves that I had to equip for this variation. So, But let's get into some of his other custom moves, which are really interesting. So I'll start with my first variation. I've kind of tried to group them into um, like themes of moves. So I think in this variation I had all the, the lightning, or the not lightning, it looks like lightning, but the rift moves. So with this custom move, um, I forget what it's actually called, but it is what gives you the quantum slices. And if you equip it with the uh, um, like the air toolkit move, which allows you to do the Argus plunge and stuff in the air, it will let you do it in the air as well. So not only... Okay, I'm going to turn off Easy Crushing Blows. <laughs> so not only can you do this on the ground, which kind of works as like a short-range projectile that's pretty good and does some decent damage. 137, that's pretty good. You can also do it in the air just to go straight across. It has pretty decent recovery, like, so you can just use it to, like, get in. Like, if the opponent's, like, really far away and trying to zone you out, you know, you can use it to, like, zoom in on them. And if you hold down when you do it, so that he'll just go downwards and it basically becomes a dive kick. And he can amplify this in really cool ways. So off the, on, when he's on the ground, he can only amplify to do, like, the double, double upwards one. But in the sky, you can just keep amplifying it to go straight across. He can either... After, um, after he does the down one, he can just amplify the normal one. Or he can go across, down, and then <laughs> across, down, up. Or across, across, down. It's really cool. He's a lot of, uh, a lot of options with this. It's a really cool move. And it's also interesting <laughs> how he can just like... Uh, hello? Hello? He can amplify it like a bunch and get some like good damage just by amplifying it a ton. I don't know, this move is just really fun. How he can just throw it out and do so many like double amplifies. It's 
really satisfying to all of you. <laughs> and like if you anti-air your opponent, or maybe like you do a jump attack, you can just do this and you get a big chunk of damage. I don't know. It's probably not worth all the meter, but it's really fun. <laughs> It's really fun. But, um, so these moves pair well with this other rift move that he has, which is his down back four. I don't know what it is called. Um, quantum rift. So he opens a rift to the water realm, and basically, I'm glad I chose someone with a projectile, but if I get Kotal to throw a projectile. Um, <laughs> nice recording. If I put out this, it just absorbs projectiles. And it stays out there for a decent amount of time, you know, it stays and you can actually move around while it's out. So, you know, while this is out, you know, I can throw my own projectiles, punish people for trying to throw theirs. It's kind of like Frost's like thing, but what's good about this is not only does it absorb them, but it also charges up one of your crushing blows. And it's also a lot faster than Frost's, like the recovery, oh wow, starts up in 11 frames and the recovery is pretty fast as well. So, it's a very good, like, projectile absorber, probably one of the best in the game, maybe aside from Aaron Black's Scudshot. But what's really good about this is it synergizes really well with, um, his lightning moves, because when he absorbs two projectiles, it doesn't have to be in a row, but two projectiles in total, this actually becomes a crushing blow, and then you can get combos off of it. Wow. Oh, a great example. <laughs> Here, let me just put on easy crushing blows so I don't have to keep absorbing projectiles. So that means you can go into cool combos like this, so like you can go... Uh, like even like from jump attacks you can combo into it like super, super easily, it's really cool. Um, but yeah, so when you get the crushing blow, you can go in for combos and depending on what you use to combo into it, you can do different kinds of combos. So if you're up close, you can do something like this. Or maybe... Um, And depending on what special moves you have, you know, if you have the Argus Plunge, oh wait, you're not going to have it if you use this. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can get some really high damaging combos even without spending meter. Oh come on, that's a bit hard to time, but... There we go. 300, yeah, 37% for one crushing blow, just because like, you absorb two projectiles, that's really good. So now in this variation, even though you don't have the Argus Plunge, you have this really good option for like extended combos and you can do it like after a full combo as well so like if I do something like this and go into it I can get that crushing blow whenever I <laughs> whenever I want and throw it in wherever so really really good move I love charge crushing blows because you like you actually have to do something like yourself to get it so it feels more like you deserve it because you know you worked for it and it's really good you can go I'll try and sh show some more combos you can get from it can do something like this. So one bar of meter, you're getting almost 40%, so really good stuff. Actually, that was two bars, but yeah. Really cool that you can have charge up crushing blows with this. I really like that. And I think it, it yeah, also off of the sky one. So if you get like a jump kick, and you do something like that, you can actually get a combo from it now. <laughs> Is this just not the most satisfying thing you've ever seen? Um, what will I end it with? Um, like this is just so cool. <laughs> you can like double amplify something into a crushing blow from a jump kick and do... It's just so cool and I, I really like this lightning variation. So yeah, for this variation, you have this absorb, you have the Argus Plunge, including all of the Sky versions. Um, because, and, but for the Sky versions, you do need to, uh, do need to equip his um, air, air attack. Um, move, which is actually one of his custom slots, is to do the attacks in the air, like we showed before. Okay, moving on to the next one. I didn't name these interestingly at all, these are just what they are by default. In this variation, I think I have a bunch of water, like, water splash moves, right? Maybe? What do I have? Oh yeah, so these are some, some of, like, kind of more interesting moves. Um, out of all of them. So, he has this... What is it called? Hydro Boost? Isn't that the name of the buff in MK9? But, this actually replaces his, um... His Around the World Kick. But, let me tell you, it's completely worth it. And it looks... It looks just as awesome as his Around the World Kick. Like, it looks so cool. But, it has almost the exact same functionality, if not better than his Around the World Kick. So, not only is... Wait, he's not blocking anymore. 
Not only is it like safe if you amplify it, because it's kind of like um, MKX Katana with their like fan thing, you can actually just amplify it and then do a jump attack. So you can make it safe and then, you know, go in for pressure. Oh, uh, hello? And yeah, you know, after you do a jump attack, you know, do whatever you want, go for mix-ups or whatever. But it also goes for combos, so you can, because you can amplify it, you do a jump attack, you can do, an, uh, you can do a jump attack after you amplify it, any jump attack, but uh, in the mid-screen you're just going to be doing jump twos. Um, but if you do that, you can get some really cool and really high damaging combos that you can't usually get. Hello? There we go. So, it's a bit awkward to time. Um, and then you can dash in and get like his then one, three, three, four. And yeah, so he gets. Wait, oh god. <laughs> there we go. So that's a simple combo, it does 300 damage, so he's getting a bunch, a big damage boost compared to what, like, the damage he was getting previously. And so, you know, if you do something like this... Oh my god. Oh, that doesn't work, what? And, but yeah. It allows to look for a lot more combo extensions, and it's, as I showed before, it's also a really good pressure tool. Oh my god. <laughs> See, like that? 319 damage, really good. So, he gets... Oh my god. <laughs> it does take a lot of practice to get used to the timing. Or maybe I'm just bad. Oh my god. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> that does work and it's like about 310, so you know, he gets a bit of a damage boost and it's also a very good pressure tool. Because he can cancel into his jumping attacks, like make himself very plus. And yeah, so it's a really good move, and it's even one you can just throw out, because it starts out in 8 frames, so like, after pokes, you can just throw it out. Because like, they'll try to counter poke you, but you're in the sky, man. <laughs> You've jumped all the way out there, and they're gonna get hit by these. And also, when you're up close, you can actually combo from this meterlessly, off of like, um, a down 1, I believe. Let's see if I... Yeah, so you can do like, down 1 into, into your Argus Plunge or something. And, you know, get some bit extra damage that way. And so, you know, off of a poke, just, you know, if you've done a down one into this and then it hits them, and you just get, like, an instant, like, 200 damage just because, like, they tried to counter poke you. So, like, that's pretty good. And you can amplify it for a bit more. Oh, <laughs> God. But, yeah, it's a really cool move. Really good for pressure. Just good to, like, throw out. You get combos from it. Good combo tool. Good pressure tool. It's uh, something that I think a lot of people are going to be running. And I know Sonic Fox is very fond of this move. Um. Oh, mm -mm. No. <laughs> yeah, see, 345 for that basic combo there. I, I say basic, I messed it up a ton. <laughs> but um, that's a lot of damage for Rain, for one bar. Especially when, you know, he usually has to like double amplify to get like a bit over 300 damage. So it's really good big damage buff when you have this move on. And uh, another combo move that I have on in this variation uh, is his Weather Ball. So with this, he has a lot of things he can do with it. So normally it just hits, does a bit of damage, it's just a normal projectile, you know, it's very unsafe, it's just a high basic projectile, but when you amplify it, that's when things get interesting. So regularly, he kind of just like slightly brings them towards him, you know, just like a slight like pull in to get some combos going, like something like this. Oops. Excuse me. What? Yeah, I'll just do something super simple. 
um, but you can also do um, hold holds like towards him, like holds backwards, and it'll like really throw them towards him. So like if you're full screen, you can get a combo from this, which is really awesome. Um, so you know, if you catch someone with your projectile, pull them all the way in for a combo. Um, the timing's a bit different, and you're gonna have to practice it because obviously when you're pulling them in from that far, the timing's gonna be slightly different. <laughs> And that also means if you're close, you don't want to do the pull, like, the far pull version, because it's just going to launch him, like, way over your head. There's not much you can do from that. He also can amplify it, um, upwards, which just throws him in the air. And that can lead to, actually, some really good, um, like, down two combos. Um, if I do something, like... Can be a bit hard to time. Oh my god. <laughs> I swear I keep turning on off bro crushing blows and it still manages to be on. I mean, easy crushing blows. Um, yeah, so he can get down two combos with this, which is actually really good. If I can... If <laughs> and me doing combos while recording just doesn't happen. There we go. So he can get some good damage that way. So like, these two moves you're probably not going to put together, because they're both good combo moves. But, um, you know, on their own, you probably can use them in your variation to have some really cool combos. So, like, this one, like, even if you don't want to do, um, you don't have to make it, uh, like, down two one. You can even just do, like, jump, jump combos. So, like, if you do something like this, you can actually jump in and get combos that way. Which is really fun, because not many, too many characters have jump combos in this game. So, that's really fun. And, uh, yeah, but what's really good is that you can get down two combos, because that means that, like, either- it's kind of like, um, an option select off of breakaway, I guess, because whether they break away or not, you're doing a down two. And if they break away, you know, you've done your down two, you get a chunk of damage, and you, if they don't break away, well, you actually can get a combo from it anyways. And it's a really high damaging combo. Because down twos do not scale much. And they're a big chunk of damage. Oops. But you also, like, have to time your stuff pretty well. That's not gonna work. Yeah, you have to do the... the, uh... You can actually do the down two pretty late. I just keep trying to do it early, because a lot of other characters, when you do these, need to be... But, yeah. You can get some good damage that way. Very good combo move, and... The other way you can amplify it is downwards, and that pops them into the ground, they get a bit more. And that kind of, it's almost, it's almost like you're getting, um, like, wall combos, like, against the corner. Um, because you can, you know, easily get in some, like, stand ones or, like, down ones, because, you know, they're kind of just, like, stuck in your face. So you can get a bunch of, like, stand ones and stuff in your combos. Um, or, you know, just keep it simple and just do, like... Stuff like this, get some damage that way. And the last and maybe most interesting way is he can hold backwards and it actually throws him throws him kind of backwards. But that weird like crouch lying down state isn't actually a knockdown. That's actually a restand. So they're standing up there, so they don't actually get to sit on the ground. So he gets another restand in this variation. So there are some other moves that give him restands, but this move, like on top of giving him combos and stuff, also gives him a restand, so you don't need to bother equipping moves like that. So this is a really good move. Um, so, you know, and it's decently plus, plus 53, so yeah, he's a lot of time. He can jump in and force his, like, jump attacks or something. Oh, that's a bit far away. Like, if you end a combo in this... You know, you've got a lot of time, you can go in for maybe, you know, just simple mids. Or maybe you could, like, uh, run in and do, like, a hop attack. Or, like, you know, this one reaches pretty fast, so you could do that one. Or he could like do his low, because they they can't do anything for a long time. It's plus fifty three. You have a lot of time to you know go into throws or strikes or whatever. So really good restand there. Okay, I think yeah those are the two moves in this variation. So there's this move that you can either combo needlessly if you're up close, and it also starts combos. For really big damage. 
Um, and like, he, it gets a lot of like versatility off of this. Like, there's so many different combos you can do. Like 323 just for that simple combo. And I'm pretty sure he can actually double amplify. It. But um, that's only really useful when you're in the corner, because then you know you can actually get combos off of it more. Can uh, excuse me. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> if you check out some combo videos, they have some really cool double amplify combos. And uh, yeah, so this move is really good, and it's something you can just throw out 8 frames, so good. And his weather ball has so many applications for like getting combos from basic basically anywhere. Like, so no matter where you are or what type of combo you can get, you know, down 2 combos. Or you can get restands, it's a really good move. But it does replace his Katatos. But you know, it's really awesome. So, let's quickly move on to his next moves. And I'm pretty sure this is a bunch of water splash attacks. So, yeah, so he has this restand like aqua splash. It's a really good move. It only leaves him plus four, but you know, that's good enough. And you can do it after any of his combos, basically. I think after this. Oh no, it has to be like in a combo he can do. So if I do something like. Can end in a restand, and you know, it's always good to deny your opponent's wake up options. And it kind of often leaves him in a good range for like his like quick mids and stuff, so you can go in for this one, you know, which is safe, or this, which is also safe, you know, just to check the opponent. And you know, once they're respecting you doing all these mids, you can probably get an easy dash in and grab. Because as we said before, his dash is very fast, and his grab is also like. I feel like he leans in and has like a lot bigger like hitbox for his grab than a lot of other characters, like he. I feel like this reaches like so much more consistently than a lot of other characters grabs like his dash in and grab is so, such a like He's just so good at yeah dashing in and grabbing like just then like you weren't even that close, but it still works So uh, yeah, this moves. It's pretty simple. It's just a resend. You can end your combos in it Something like that and then you know go in for more pressure and whatever from there on Okay, but he also has this anti-air splash, which is an unblockable, because it's, you know, an anti-air. And it does pretty good damage, and it leaves the opponent very close to you, so it's kind of almost a better version of the, um, of the, like, round the world kick to end your combos in, because it does a bit more damage, and it leaves them right beside you, so, you know, you can go in for your, you know, pressure, lows, mix-ups, whatever you want. But, just like the round the world kick, you can actually amplify it and get combos in basically the exact same way. And so yeah, it operates very similarly to the round the world kick. So like if I go... Oops. Uh... Oh my goodness. But yeah, you can get combos off of it basically in a very similar way that you would from the round the world kick. But just a little bit different to time, which kind of makes it slightly annoying. But, you know, it's all good. So yeah, you can get very good combos from that. And it's also just a really good combo ender, like even if you've just done a normal combo like this. Uh, like just with this round the world kick use it to end his combos and it does a decently big chunk of damage and it leaves, as I said, very close, you can do throws or whatever, very good way of ending combos. And you know, it's also very good anti s you know, people like Jackie or anyone that loves jumping up a ton like Katana or Kung Lao, it's you know, just a good anti air and if they get hit by it, obviously they're going in for a full combo. And just like the round the world kick you can double amplify this as well, and so that'll lead to a ton of combo potential. I'm not sure what the optimal is off of this, but you know, I know you can use it in really well conjunction with this, and you know, just something like that. That one, that's pretty good, decent damage. Okay, and what else do I have? I have the anti s black. Oh, I have this. So, this is a very interesting move, probably one of the most interesting from the trailer of his. But, um, so he kind of just like dodges back, like a backdash, he has this shield, and then he just launches himself back at you, and you know, just knocks you away for 70 damage. It's a mid, so you know, mid specials are always pretty good. I don't believe it's safe. 
minus 16, so no, it's not safe, you know, maybe they'll mess up the punish, because, you know, it does leave you a little bit far away, so you have a chance of being safe, but, you know, I, that's not the point of the move. Oh, oh yeah, that's probably a save. Minus 16, but all the way over there. You probably do that. Uh, yeah, so this move, you can hold it down, and he just stands there and does that. So what's this move kind of for? So, it's definitely not like a move that you're going to be using in combos too much, even though you can, you know. Like, if you do the amplified version, it's a pretty decent chunk of damage. Like, just to throw out, I think it's like 120. Yeah, big chunk of damage. But it's mainly going to be a like a mix-up or a, a pressure tool that you're going to use. So you can either just like let it happen, like if you see that it hits, you know, just let it happen, let it go out, get that bit of damage. So if you like hit confirm your mids, like even if you just do your back one two, uh, back two one into this, you see the devil hit, you know, just let it hit. If you want to hold it down, you can hold it down. And um, what's really good about this is if you hold it down for long enough, you get a crushing blow for it. And I believe it also applies to the amplified one. You just get a little bit more damage. It's not that much that significant, so usually I would just do the normal one um, and not waste the bar. But you can also cancel it pretty quickly. And then go, you know, go in for his mid or, you know, his low or something. Or, you know, his very fast dashes, so you can just dash in and... Like that. So it's a really good pressure tool. Like like that. Like there's so many things you can do off of it, especially since it's, you know, a mid special move, you know, like they're, they're trying to get ready for this, like, you know, maybe you're gonna keep yourself safe for doing this. Maybe are you gonna hold it down for a bunch? Like are they are they willing to attack you? Because if you know maybe if you've held it down for long enough, they don't want to press a button in case you've got the crushing blow loaded. Like or maybe, you know, and they're being respectful and you just wanna cancel it and then go in for a grab, you know, just go in for more pressure. Like, maybe if you do something like this. Uh, like, <laughs> going for an overhead or something. There's a lot of mix-up you can do off of this. And, um, like we saw in the trailer, it's also really good. Uh, can I get Kotal to ever wake up? Get up mode on. Hold roll, back roll. Ugh, I don't know which one's which. Uh, how do I keep him close? So just like that, you're able to really easily punish, like, if you end your combo in this, you can get a punish for that. I think, does it also crushing blow for um, punishing wake up attacks? Because I wasn't holding that down the whole time. Yeah, so usually you have to hold it down, like, for its whole duration and then, like, release it. But I think I'm getting it a bit early there for doing that, so yeah. Very good for punishing wake-up attacks, you know, if you read that your opponent's gonna wake-up attack. And you can even kind of, like, juke it out, so, like, if they don't want to do a wake-up attack because they think you're gonna punish it, and then they start to not wake-up attack, then you can, like, fake it out and then go in for the, uh... You know, you can get cancel run-in and then do a grab or something. There's just a lot of pressure and mix-up you can do with this tool, and it's, it's really powerful. And, you know, just being able to hold it down and get a crushing blow is a really scary thing for a lot of people because they just can't decide what to do, so, like, so quickly. Especially online, and you know, very good move for pressure. Okay, moving on again. I think this is the last variation, and it might be my favorite, to be honest. It has some, one of my favorite moves. So this is called Purple Rain, where he just summons a lightning cloud. It kind of float, flies forwards a bit, and then does a lightning strike. It actually has three different distances. You can either do it like close, medium, or far or very far, which is full screen, and he can amplify any of these versions for to do three lightning strikes which also pops up. So you know, very obviously you can do combos like this, or you can even do something better. Because it, it knocks them up really high, so you can get some good combos that way. Like you can get something like this probably. <laughs> something basic like that but you know you can even get like down two combos I believe off of it because it launches them so high if you time it right wait if you do it at the same time that the last hit
But yeah. Yeah, so that, that gets a lot of damage. You can get it down to two in there. Excuse me. Please just do the combo. Why didn't that not work? Come on. Ah. Oh my goodness. But you know, it gets a lot of damage if you get the timing down pat. Whatever, you're gonna get like 300 damage or something for that. So that's really good. But that's not what that makes this move amazing. What makes it amazing is that it's slow. And some people might be like, oh, why is, why is slow good? But, you know, obviously it's a setup. So something like this, they're gonna have to respect that on wake up. And like, so a lot of his things like his 133, three, knock the opponent down. And because it's so slow, they have to wake up into it. So I do something like this. They wake up and they're standing in it. Um, I think one of the best ways to set up is, yeah, 1-2. Because you want to have, like, as little time for them as possible. Uh, yeah, maybe that works as well, the back one, back 2-1. Because then there's, like, little room for them to, like, run away or, like, try and do something out of there. So, yeah. Either, like, the 1-3 or back 2-1 seems to work pretty well. Yeah. And as you can see there, look in the bottom left of my screen. Plus 52 when they, when they block this. Super plus. So no matter where it hits, it's going to be plus 52. So, like, even if you just, like, somehow manage to get it, like, in, like, on the ground, like, regular pressure. Like, if your opponent respects you that much that so you're able to just, like, throw this out. Like, to be honest, it's, it is pretty fast. It only takes 10 frames to actually activate the cloud. And it, you know, only has 16 frames of recovery. That's pretty good. Like, wait. Minus 26. What's going on here? 41. It has 41 frames of recovery. So, you know, it's obviously very punishable, you know, if you did up close. But, you know, if you have their, like, someone's respecting you, they think you're going to go for something, you can have some really, really strong mix up, like, with this. You know, poke that, you plus unblock, then go in for a grab. Like, there's almost nothing you can do there. Like, if I go. Oh, wait. Excuse me. Um, if I go... What? This? Oh, no, no. And then they block it. And then the grab and the block it. And the grab and the lightning strike are gonna come out, like, so close to each other. But, yeah. You see what the point is. It's super plus, you can go for tons of mix-up off of it when, when you get it out. And, you know, you can do it for free. Like, the regular lightning strike you can just do whenever. So, you know, after you've done some kind of combo, like, uh... Got the lightning strike out, now you're plus 52 if they decide to respect it. Um, what can I do? This maybe? Oh, wait, I know. Wait. So, you know, if they decide to respect that, you know, you've got basically a full combo and then you're plus 52 on wake up. And oh, I wonder, actually, I haven't tested this, but I wonder what happens if they do a wake up deck. Okay, which one's this? Oh. Okay, so that's their up two. So this is probably going to punish their up two. Yeah. And if I do the amplified version, I can block that. And that way, and I wonder if it's his other one. Oops. That one. Will... What will happen here? Will it still hit him? Oh yeah, so it's so slow it actually comes out after wake up attack. So if they do any wake up attack, it's actually going to punish them. So that's really interesting. So if they try to do wake up 3 or wake up 2, like, you have time to block it, and you can also... Then you just plus unblock and you've hit them and punish them for doing that. So now you've hit them with that. And that means if you do the Amplify version and they do a wake-up attack, you just get a free combo just because they decided to wake up. And that's pretty cool. And a lot, of the, a lot of the time, people, like, even if they see you do something, they're just going to wake up anyways. So this is really cool for denying wake-ups. Um, yeah, wow, that's really interesting. So you don't want to do a wake-up attack. Rolls will probably work. Because, um, you know, you get out of the way. But actually, let's test that. If, I, if they do a backwards roll... 
and I do the amplify, they might actually roll into it. Oh yeah, or I'd have to make the read and do the far, far away version for it to for them to have to block it, and probably don't want to be making that read too much. Or actually, it doesn't really matter because you, you you don't get punished for this. Like like it's not punishable. Like even if they roll towards you and you do the wrong one, like you're not going to get punished for it because the cloud's pretty quick. So yeah, you can just throw this out. You know, make the read. Like if you think they're going to roll away, just do this, and then they have to block that. And if they do the a forward roll, you can do the close one, and they'll roll into the close one. That's really cool. I really love this move so much. It gives him awesome setup potential, and just... Oh, so cool. And like, if you manage to get it, so, um... If you do the Amplified version, it is like, crazy plus unblock. You know, they have to block all of these. And like... You can even like, squeeze the grab in between them, probably. Maybe. Okay, no. It doesn't seem like you can. No. But, you know, you can go in, like, while they're blocking this whole thing, because they have to block that for a while, you know, you can do a low, and you can go for an overhead, and that's going to make it completely safe. So that short hop attack, you can go for overheads there, and it's going to be completely safe, if not plus on block, because the lightning cloud is still striking the opponent after it hits. So you can go in for more pressure after your short hop attack. And you've already, and in this variation, as we're going to see, I've already got quite a lot of mix-up, because I've got a low special move. So, like, they're blocking this. Um, you know, maybe they block this overhead. Maybe I do the low, and then they get hit by that, and then... Oh man, this is, it's such a, just a cool move. And if they do make this mistake and try to poke or something, and they do just get hit by it... Like... It's easy, you just get a combo. Set up another one, be more plus on block. <laughs> like, even though you landed one of them, just you know, do it again. Uh, like, oh, it's just so cool, so much fun. I love this move so much. I can't wait to see like solid setups that people use and like find with it, like that, like are more real than this. Because like currently at the moment, like it's kind of just like oh. Do it like that so, you know, they don't have much time to get out of the way. But man, there's going to be so much, so many cool uses for this. And by the way, yes, it does go away on hit and block. So, you do, you know, it has to be a read when you use it that the opponent isn't actually going to attack you while you summon it. So, you know, just, you know, do it at certain times. But it's also just such, such a good move because it's such a fast move. You can just, like, honestly even use it in your zoning. Like, just, you know, be throwing all of these, like, clouds out. And you can call them out pretty quickly. Like, you can call them out right as they strike. So, yeah. It's really good. You can just act it. Put, incorporate them into your zoning. So, I don't know. That's such a really awesome move. And the last thing we're going to show is... What? His Tidal Wave, whatever this is called? Yeah, Tidal Wave. Um, this basically is just like... Kind of like a noob cybot slide. And that it's like a low that you throw out kind of goes like half of the screen, you know, it does a little bit of damage, it's a low, so you know, they need to be like respecting you whenever you're in this distance, because they need to be blocking low, which is also really good, like knowing the fact that you have like a long reaching overhead, that's pretty like, it's pretty scary, like obviously you're going to be going for the low more, because it's way more safe, but like knowing that in this range you can either go for overheads or lows, it's going to be really scary to the opponent. And you can also amplify it, just to um, basically just make it completely safe. Minus 8 with a little bit of pushback, like, that's not... You're not doing anything about that. So yeah, and it just makes it have, like, even more active frames. Has a little bit more knockdown. So, like, if you're scared that the opponent's gonna, like, block it, because, you know, you're throwing this out. Because it is very punishable, it has, like, no pushback, so it's pretty easy to punish off of basically anything. So if you do think they are gonna block it, you know, amplify it, boop, you're safe. Yes, that's basically all this move is. It's a mix-up and, like, neutral tool. You know, you just throw out, hit the opponent. It's pretty plus on block, plus 18. It's pretty good. And, you know, he has this overhead at his string. So, you know, you can mix up overhead low. And, like, both of the options are safe. So you can either be safe overhead or safe low. So, you know, pretty scary stuff. And, you know, yeah, it's just really good. It has a lot of active frames. So, like, if they try and jump in. Here, I'll try and record code jumping. It has a lot of active frames, so if they jump, it's likely that they'll land on it. 
especially if you amplify. See, like that? Actually, it might be a pretty good anti air. It seems like it hits him pretty well, and he bends down, so like... That's pretty cool. Okay. Anyways, that is all the moves, I believe, and if we go back to Variation 5, that is just our base, base rain. With no custom moves except the air, the, um, the air August plunge. But yeah, that was my quick break- oh, quick, I say. <laughs> that was just, a, I should say, a beginner's breakdown of all of the custom moves. Hopefully it helped you decide what moves you want to be using in your variation of rain. I think that personally, I want to be using- I might be using the, uh, the purple rain, the lightning strike, with just- like miscellaneous other moves, like maybe I'll pick the um, like the one where he jumps up in the air and does the splashes, or I might do like the anti air shot is pretty good as well. So I might just like pair that with whatever like whatever I feel like at the time, <laughs> because I don't know that lightning strike is just so fun to me. But oh, I also really like the vi lightning variation where you absorb the things that he just has so many cool things and so many cool options for variations. Such a cool character. I can't wait to play with him more online and see people finding out cool things about him. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. Um, wait, I know, no, 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 let's not end. Let's quickly go over some combos that he can do off of like crushing blows and stuff. So what are his basic combos? He's gonna be doing, I think the optimal stuff, or the easy optimals is something like this. You go back to one, dash in stand one, and then the two, four, two string into, yeah, that. This one's not too hard, and it's pretty good damage. And he can also do like a similar thing if he wants to extend it again. So, um, uh... Oops. And that gets really good damage, 328 damage. Um... And, you know, you're gonna do, like, things doing... <laughs> You're gonna do stuff like around that like route anyways, like there's so many things he can do to like get decent chunks of damage Like it doesn't really matter what you do because he's just so many options But um, yeah, you're gonna be doing something like this like after you've done the double extensions You're almost always gonna be ending in this string just because like it's the only thing that connects consistently other than like a down two um, Yeah, so I'll just show once more Yeah, so that's the basic combo you're gonna be doing, and it leaves you very close, you know, some down ones and throws and stuff. And he can do this in every variation, which is so awesome that, like, he's always able to do this. And, you know, if you think the opponent's gonna break away, just do an Argus Plunge when it, whenever you think they're gonna break, and then get a crushing blow for it. It's, yeah, he's so versatile and I love it. And, you know, he can get these combos easily in the air as well, like if I do something like, uh... Like, that's almost 300 damage there. No, that's not gonna work. Yeah, but anyways, he's gonna be getting combos like this, like... Wherever you are. Very fun stuff, and he has similar things like with the anti-air shot and... Yeah, there's so many cool combos, and they're pretty easy to find out yourself, you know, you just do some jump attacks, do some... Do some of the light around the world kicks, I don't know, oh my god, it's just so fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown, and I hope you enjoy playing with Rain, that's the most important thing to me right now. Anyways, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.